redemption song Bob Marley right there, one of the liberation songs right there. It wasn't the only one redemption song. There's also Black Redemption. There's also uh, Buffalo Soldier. You also have Zimbabwe. There's also War. Well, he produced so, so many songs that were actually uh, kind of revolutionary music that was intended to unite Africans and also ask for change in their respective countries. The connection between music and politics has been used in many cultures and was utilized by blacks in their struggle for freedom and civil rights. Music has been used by Africans over the course of history to express feelings of struggle and hope as well as to gather feelings of solidarity for their freedom struggle. Africans have used music as a way to express their struggle for freedom and equality, which has spanned the history of the world and resulted in the creation and polarization of many music genres, including jazz, funk, disco, rap, and hip-hop, not forgetting reggae. Many of these songs and artists played pivotal roles in generating support for the civil rights movement in the, uh, was it the North, uh, North American uh, civil rights movement? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was back in the day. And also uh, the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Well, in Uganda right here, the NRA, which will be celebrating the day it captured uh, this Sunday, that is on January 26th, used music to energize troops and win hearts. And today, together with our arts panelist, Andrew Kagwa, we are trying to discuss the thematic music these movements have used and why it matters so much. From America to Venezuela to South Africa to Luero. That's the conversation. Welcome, Mr. Kagwa. You're welcome. Let's talk about the significance of, of, of music when it comes to liberation struggles. Uh, I think the very first thing I'll say is one of those things I usually tell people mm -hmm. that they get tired of it. Like, art is the way of life. Uh, and it's usually the cheapest way to energize people. So when it comes to music, music hits the core. Mus mm -hmm. Music speaks to people. Mm -hmm. Like music is a language itself. It doesn't even have to be Luganda or English or anything. It's just mm -hmm. a vibe in, in its mm -hmm. own way. Like mm -hmm. uh, you see, when an, when an RA was fighting, mm -hmm. there, there were those times when they had lost people mm -hmm. and they would sing about them. Th there is a video I saw. I think it was a documentary mm -hmm. done by Frank Walusimbi mm -hmm. when he was talking about music. And there, there was that part where they were singing about Comrade Mutebi, Comrade who the people mm, that they yeah. had lost mm. when they were fighting, and then they would sing about the good points, the, the good things mm. that were coming to them, and then there were those times they would even jubilate about, say, winning mm. over some people, or winning over a district mm -hmm. or something. So music is that, music and art generally, mm. are those things that we usually stay with, they energize us, like it's a way of life, as I usually say it. Well, not only Uganda music has played a pivotal role, and many historians are saying that actually, according to history, it proves that actually music is indispensable as money when it comes to war. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so true. Uh, you see, in Uganda, in Uganda way before mm -hmm. these modern times, uh, stories have been told of how Baganda used to sing about and Dagano Yorenda even mm -hmm. when they did not know mm -hmm. much about mm -hmm. it. But you know that that was just maybe a current affair that they mm -hmm. sang about. But then there was something they sang about and really wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've heard of the story of uh, the counties of Bugangaisi mm -hmm. and uh, I, I don't remember the other one, which Buganda needed to take back, and people did songs when they were encouraging Baganda to go and settle there so that mm -hmm. they vote in favor of those counties mm -hmm. staying in Buganda. And then, of course, uh, you can go to South Africa where you've seen songs like Shosholoza. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how they say it, mm -hmm. were used during apartheid. Like, it's like they could not even go on for, a, for an entire meeting without... Mm -hmm doing mm -hmm. one of these songs. Then mm -hmm. you have the black movement where they did songs like We Shall Overcome. We Shall Overcome. Like, th like music, music has been around struggles mm -hmm. and you always need music around struggle mm -hmm. because it, it's usually that one thing that someone usually jumps on to and whether it's in the language they mm -hmm. understand or not, mm -hmm. they usually feel like they connect with the message. Mm -hmm. 
And Bob Marley, on one of his concerts, did bring two very pertinent and uh, very, very pertinent politicians. That is Michael Mensah and Edward Seger. Yeah. Yes, it brought them together. Can we also replicate that right here in Uganda and use music? Can we actually use music to unite the various ah, political facets in the Jesus country and bring Christ. about unity? <laughs> that, that's a conversation in itself. Music like was a uh, very, very good unifying factor, I'm telling you. The North Carolina uh, movement, uh, the civil rights movement in the 1960s. You talked about South Africa, mm -hmm. apartheid, Zimbabwe, Chimurenga mm -hmm. music. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Mapfuma was using music to actually call on the parents of the mm -hmm. various, uh, various parents in Zimbabwe to actually let their children join the struggle. Mm -hmm. It was very hard for the mothers to see their children go, but they actually did that. So the role of music has been very, uh, very pertinent. To, 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 to answer the very first question, in mm -hmm. Uganda it's, it, it was possible mm -hmm. before Bobby Wine. It was very possible because I know uh, there were times, I think, you could have a baby cool show and you mm -hmm. have an opposition politician mm -hmm. in and at the same time you have a politician from the movement like in the same crowd mm -hmm. uh there were those days even bobby wine used to have it like politicians just used to love him until he came out to have his own interest like in this whole thing right now it's so hard to do what bob Marley pulled off why is it so hard uh, at the moment, Ugandan music has been so divided. Like, it is very, very divided. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, om it's like there is a clear line where this artist mm -hmm. is pro mm -hmm. and this artist is mm -hmm. against. So, you do not even expect opposition politicians to be in the audience mm -hmm. when artist X is singing. Mm -hmm. And you expect politicians of the opposition to be at to be in the audience mm -hmm. when artist Y mm -hmm. is performing. Mm -hmm. So revolutionary music, it undoubtedly was very impactful back in the day. Is it still impactful as we speak in this modern day? Can you release a protest song and, uh, and it actually uh, influences the public or the society where you live to actually rise up and actually ask for their rights or demand for them? Uh, I think it's so hard to call people to rise up. Say in a country like Uganda, it's so hard mm -hmm. to call people to rise up but somehow people become aware and their approach to things mm -hmm. at times becomes so different mm -hmm. it's so hard to call them to rise up mm -hmm. uh there, there were those days i think even mm -hmm. even even when it comes to the u.s mm -hmm. there were those days of the civil right movement where people actually used to rise up mm -hmm. to stand for something today mm -hmm. People will react to it. They will try to follow the legal measures to get action, mm -hmm. but not necessarily rise up in a way, but they will mm -hmm. still ask for action. Mm -hmm. In Uganda, it's a different story, but in the U.S., people have been using music. I, I, I still am one of those people that believe music was one of the biggest tools that brought Barack Obama into power. I agree. I agree on that one, yes. Because, uh, I mean, if you still remember... I remember when, P. when and all will these I artists, am, you know, trying when, to when will I am concert. turned one of his pictures, yeah. Yes, We Can, into a song. Mm -hmm. And then different people of all colors were reciting mm -hmm. the, the words of an Obama speech as lyrics. Like, mm -hmm. that, that was strong. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, Still Will I Am, a project Will I Am was involved in, uh, Where Is the Love, when they re decided to reenact it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that, that didn't really work because mm -hmm. it felt like they were trying to ask people not to trump yeah, USA. Yeah. Mm. But <laughs> in the end, people trumped yeah. USA. Uh, like very many people have been doing songs even now. So, mm, yeah. mm. so no, let's talk no. about the generation that actually ushered in Will I Am, mm -hmm. P. Diddy, and all these other artists. The generation that came around the 1960s, right there at the height of the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. So 20 years later, around the 1980s, the civil rights movement started to dwindle a little bit. So that's when the black, uh, young black men came out and decided that they, they had to express themselves yeah, through music like funk, you mm -hmm. remember, through uh, disco, through uh, hip hop. Like, like, that's when hip hop came out. <laughs> and they were using that music to actually talk about not only the issue of mm -hmm. uh, racial discrimination, but the fact that they were unemployed and they were actually going through so, so many hurdles. Can 
are we see, are we still seeing the same in this modern day? Our, our our artists actually releasing music that is actually talking about the issues affecting society and not just commercialized our music. Which artists are we talking about? The Ugandan uh, ones? No, no, no. In, in general, uh, in general, music at the moment is mm. so commercialized. Yeah, and uh, that's basically Uganda. In mm. Uganda, people are trying to be safe. Mm -hmm. People are trying to be so safe, so caged, mm -hmm. because you want to stay on the right side of the mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. uh, in other markets, music is so commercialized. Okay, w I would say with the exception of our friends in the neighborhood mm -hmm. in Nairobi or Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, like, geez, I, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Wajinga Nyinji. It was released by King Kaka. He's mm -hmm. a rapper. And then many people went on releasing like other versions of the song. Mm. It's talking about the ill mm. in in their politics. Mm. Sadly, I do not understand a lot of Swahili, mm -hmm. but at least when you watch the video, you you get what he's talking about. Uh, there is Tujiangalie, which was done by Saudi Soul. Mm. Um, then I think there is Hayawani mm -hmm. by Nyashinsky. Mm -hmm. Like all these songs are actually coming from Kenya. Mm -hmm. In in Uganda. At the moment, it's been literally one person. And in Uganda, it's sad that almost all such conscious mm -hmm. music is supposed, not supposed, but it's almost against mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it could have been nice if mm -hmm. we had some that was maybe mm -hmm. saying something mm -hmm. that, like, for them, even if it's not asking mm -hmm. people to support or anything. But so the music appears to be against the government, but it's not really against the government. It's just uh, talking about social yeah, issues like about this and that. The price of sugar <laughs> is up. The fuel uh, we cannot afford. Uh, <laughs> such <laughs> issues right there. But then you, you also say that there's only one artist that is, that is actually doing uh, this, which uh, could be when Bobby Wine. it comes Wine. to Uganda, it's, it's almost... So why artist. is conscious music dying? There, is, there are people that are doing conscious music but are not getting airplay. Mm. Uh, simply because either they are very poetic mm. and we do not want to be overly artistic, mm -hmm. or either they are not as famous mm -hmm. as the big artists we mm -hmm. have. Uh, and at the moment, it's so hard to get a play when you're not that famous. For other countries, mm -hmm. like the US, mm -hmm. things are just too commercialized. Mm -hmm. Like your label will ask you to sing a certain way mm -hmm. and to sing about a certain message. And that's why some artists have denied or stopped themselves from joining these labels like Kendrick Lamar. You've seen him like, continue with his conscious music, taking over from the NWA that was very, very, uh, very active in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, not only that, the cool and also the technique. I'm telling you, there are conscious rappers out there in the US and uh, even in Uganda. Underground, but, 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 but again, yes, like I said, underground. But then the, the issue is the issue could be Kagwa music in Uganda here was so pertinent and so 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 pertinent. Yes, in that in that case. But then, if music was so pertinent and uniting people in the 1980s, why is President Museveni stopping Bobby Wine from doing the same, from carrying on with <laughs> his concerts? What could be the problem? Because right now, people know the power of music. Okay. People know the power of art. People know the power oh. of a song on a drum. Like, people are very much mm. aware of what a song can do to the mm. masses. Mm. Because, I mean, just mm. the other day, he was a ghetto man. Mm. Like, yeah, that guy we saw laughing around and... Mm. Mm. Yeah, before you knew, he took the mm. ghetto to the right place. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, indeed, music can actually help the society right there. Because I was uh, reading a few articles and they were saying uh, music can heal the soul. In that if you're going through a, ha a certain hardship, music can help you forget about that and just give you more energy to resuscitate your energy to just continue with your life and move forward. It's something that we saw back in the day and that's something we continue to see today. Mm -hmm. So right about now, we would like to get into some of the U Uganda's ghettos and get to know what the ghetto ch kids right there are thinking about the current dynamics in Uganda. And our reporter Stephen Bide took it upon himself to make that journey. A very good morning, one once again, Mr. Mbide, what's the latest? Where are you?
and last week's hustles uh, as they get prepared for uh, this day that is tomorrow. I will be speaking to them about how prepared they are and how, how they are finding the life and the journey as they head uh, towards uh, this journey they are on. Now, let me get closer to them. These guys are challenging me here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Big up, big up for these guys, the triplets ghetto kids. Uh, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I can say I just bumped into you and you're just getting crazier here, getting yeah. ready for tomorrow. Yes, we're very, very ready. Yeah, we're so ready. We're so ready for How tomorrow. ready are you? Uh, as you see, we've been doing our rehearsals. We've already made some big things already for you, big surprises for you. So just come on the 25th, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. I know this journey has not been that easy for you, yeah. but so far, how are you coping up with uh, your, your life, your, your, your fellow ghetto kids, yeah. and getting ready for this day? This day? Yeah, the journey has not been good. That's why we are organizing our big show, which is tomorrow. And we want, this show is a charity show. So we are begging our people to come and support us. We prepare the best for them, the best dancers, everything. Entrance is only 10K and VIP is only 20 And I know Patricia doesn't need more introduction, but uh, for the rest of the guys here, at least for you, you're more popular with the, the audience there, but these guys here have done a lot on the local and international stages, have shared the stages with big artists here and internationally. I will be speaking to each one of them yeah. uh, to let me know how life is and what's uh, what's up uh, for the audience? What, what should the ex audience expect from you tomorrow? Tell them expect fire tomorrow because we have the best for them. Mm. Yeah, we have the best for them. Your name? Have, my name is Kokode. Mm. Kokode. Yeah. Uh, just let me know how life, how life has been for you. Life mm. has not been bad for me because since I, since I left street, or oh, since I left street and I came to get a kids, life has been good for me okay. since there and then. Yeah. Okay. And you? Uh, I'm good. I'm fed. Mm. Yeah. Life has been good for me because I've been studying. Yes. These guys have been inspiring so many young talents across the country, and I can see even these ones here. I can see Chiviri and uh, the rest of the guys. Mulimutia, Mulimutia. Yetuli. Ulambu Gambachi. Burundi. Boya Gala. Mutukubia move and the dancers are coming. Muliwa coming. Eh. Eh. Kakati. Kamuza Chiviri, one of Chiviri or Gambotia. How they how he how he manages to put these guys together, uh, the ghetto triplets, ghetto kids, and they are ready getting down for their show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Parliament, but we are to number landlord. Uh, very soon at Gama January, a Chijakuanga Chiguaso. We are praying so hard. Mukama Venga to Yamachi Tamble. The last time I checked, uh, you were supposed to be evicted on 31st December, but you've seen so many people coming up and trying to put up some, some fund for you yeah. to save these little ones and the talent. Uh, just, just, just bring us to speed. Chitu Sewa Kativa and Tuamikawa Kajan, Bamekawa, was Ragoku Suizo Kuaya Kuatirako. Most uh, uh, many people like uh, we are fundraising and uh, the money so far, the fundraise was around up to three million and ten. Uh, it was three million, uh, fifteen thousand Ugandan shillings. That's how uh, that's how much they fundraised. And then right now, um, so far, we are uh, put up a concert as people have been requesting, such that we can raise money. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, maybe give me that just the last one more dance as we wrap up and give it back to Romeo. Uh, these are the triplets, ghetto kids, and they will be showing you their talent tomorrow. Uh, they... This is Stephen Embiid, the light here at. Uh, <laughs> the ghetto kids right there doing what they do best. I really, really love those kids. Yes. <laughs> And I'm still here with Andrew Kagwa, an arts and culture journalist with the Daily Monitor. We are still talking about something that is related with what the Ghetto Kids were doing, music, and its role in politics back then and right now. Mr. Kagwa, 
You're still yeah. here with me. Yeah. You're enjoying the show? Yeah, yeah, I'm liking the show. I'm liking <laughs> the show. I, I like the topic. <laughs> yeah. I'm very passionate about topics surrounding mm. uh, music or mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. influencing the way things amazing. are running today. Yeah. Eritrea, it worked uh, amazing for them when uh, Ethiopia had colonized them. They used music, uh, using coded messages to mm -hmm. actually ins uh, uh, talk, uh, invite other Eritreans who are also being uh, um, in that same bracket to just mm -hmm. rise up mm -hmm. and uh, uh, do just that, liberate themselves. But then mm -hmm. in Uganda right here, how best can we promote and preserve the values of conscious music in this polarized political environment? Uh, is it possible? Uh, truth is, the way we are right now, people are very self-censored. Uh, I could say one radios, TVs, many of our media houses are very self-censored. Mm -hmm. uh, like I usually tell people, Kasukali Keiko was mm. never banned. Uh, and it's the same thing with Tuli Yamba mm. Lenguri. Those, those songs were never mm. banned, mm. but those songs were somehow never played on many of the media So houses. there was self-censorship Like, there is point. that self-censorship where someone knows, like, I shouldn't cross this line. Mm. Yet, when it comes mm. to the other way around, mm. like, people will be like, oh, yeah, they've brought a new song, let's play it. Actually, but Andrew, that self-censorship <laughs> reminds me of the... Um, the Vietnam War, yes, the Vietnam mm -hmm. War. Mm -hmm. Hollywood refused to produce any movie actually uh, to talking about the Vietnam War or the bad things that were happening in that country. No, they, re but then <laughs> they refused to they release refused the movies. Even th <laughs> but they, re they released after the fall of Saigon. Even media houses, they refused totally to even host <laughs> anyone who was against the Vietnam War. But then guess what the people did? They decided, okay, if the media is not willing to talk about it, we are going to say it through music. Are we still seeing the same in this modern day? Yeah, we, we, we are going to see much of it because we are living in a very free world. We are living in a very open society where people can access a lot of information that has been hidden from mm. them in a certain way. Mm. When, you, when you look at the edge of the internet, say songs will be banned mm. or songs will be censored and they won't be on the media, but songs will be on the internet and people will be sharing them. Mm. For Like... Like I said earlier, you look at a song like Kasukali, mm. which has not really got an airplay, and you check it on YouTube, and it's doing well. All mm -hmm. people are singing to each and every line of the song. Mm -hmm. I think that's basically the best way of preserving this music. I have a friend who is a poet, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Kagai, who usually tells me, if if you can't get it through the media, publish it in the people's minds. Mm -hmm. uh, like he, he recites quite hard hitting poems. Mm -hmm. And trust me, if you meet a person that is aware of Kagai's mm -hmm. poetry, he will tell you he knows of a, po of a poem called, say, uh, in, 1920, in 1965 mm -hmm. or or yellow poopoo, like, mm. do, do not ask me anything mm -hmm. more about mm -hmm. that poem. But mm -hmm. yeah, he literally publishes to people's minds mm. by reciting these works. So I think that's the best way you can preserve this music. Just send it to the people's minds mm -hmm. if the media is not going to play them. Mm -hmm. Something to do with hegemony. Let the people decide with the use of ideas. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Andrew Kago, an arts and culture journalist with the Daily Monitor, have been having this conversation centered around music and politics from the past and the present. We've been trying to interconnect the two. Why is Bobby Wine so, so, so pertinent when it comes to his conscious music? And why is the government so adamant to let him do just the same? Those are some of the uh, $64,000 questions we've been having here on the show. You can just uh, hit us up on what you think on NTV Uganda on both social media platforms. Right about now, I'd like to link to Mala, who has your birthday messages.